Welcome back guys. Uh, so this is a Next.js 14 tutorial on how to fetch data or how to create your own server API. I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so starting off, I am inside of my Next.js 14 project right here. This is the default project. I'm gonna first create a folder in here called products, like, like that. Put a page in here, page.js. Okay, so here is a default products page right with the products function right here okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some data from this dummy json.com it is a website that provides a free API and it looks like this if you go to their products it's just JSON data that they provide through their own API so I'm gonna do a fetch on this first uh, I just want to step through the basics of how to fetch from an external website first we're gonna fetch this display it on our page and then I'm going to create my own API on the server and fetch it from our own server. So that's the idea, just so you know you can get an understanding of the fetch features. And then I will do the server API. So at the top of our products function here, I'm gonna create a const get products. And let's do a const response equals fetch. Very basic fetch, and we're going to fetch this right here, this external URL. So copy that, put into our fetch, and we are going to return that as a response.json. Now, while I'm doing this fetch, I want it to uh, wait on the fetch, right? So we do an await, but to do an await, we have to make this an async, okay? So now this is an async. And for the beginners out there, you know, you can make this a function if you don't want to write this short code here. Some people get confused on that. You can do function. Uh, get products like that and then of course this has to be an async right for the await to happen on there so you can also do that and then we're going to uh, right outside of that function here we're going to do a const data equals await get products right because we have to call that function and of course to do an await on that in the main function here we have to make that an async as well so yeah this is how we fetch external data just think about it this page loads this function loads and then we're calling it right here and then now we can iterate through that uh, using the map function so data dot products dot map and we can just take that item and then we can output it so right here I just wrote a basic function to iterate through the products data because uh, when we're fetching this it returns a product in there so that's why I'm doing data dot products and we're mapping through the products uh, you'll see right here see that Here's the JSON data, it returns the product. And then all of these are an array of the products in there. So we're iterating through that array. And then I'm just outputting the items and I'm using a Tailwind CSS in here just to uh, wrap it all around. So I'll show you how it runs right now if I do npm run dev. And here's our localhost products. See, it, uh, it grabs all the data, it iterate through it. And I'm grabbing all of the data in here. It provides images, provides all that. So that's the basics on how to do a fetch, but we are fetching externally. So let's jump now on how to create an API on our website where I can fetch this internally. What do I mean by that? I'm going to do a localhost 3000 slash API. And I'm going to now fetch data that I'll generate on our own website, but I'll use the same uh, JSON data right here. I'll use the same data on our own uh, server. All right, so to create an API on our own server right here, I'm going to go to our app folder here, right, for the root. Let's close up this product. So right in the app, I'm going to create a folder called API. You can create any folder that you want. And inside of that, I'm going to have this route. So Next.js 14 has the routes file where you can put a route inside and that will route it with um, an export function of get. You can also do export function push so yeah there's all of the request type functions but right now I'm going to use the get function right and uh, let's make this an async because we're gonna do some async on this as we're fetching and this is the most basic that I can show you guys right now and then I'll, I'll make it more advanced but the most basic right now so let's do a let response equals just like that and uh, you see how I'm putting the products inside of this is the same thing right here that's the same right 
I'm just showing you an example. Let's say we query our own database to get products and then we output it in JSON data. But I'm just gonna show you like a little shorthand right here to do that, just really quick for this example. And then we need to return this. So return response dot JSON. And we're returning the response right here, that variable. So we can do a const on this too if you want. I'm going to do a let right now because I'm gonna show you why. And uh, let's save that. So now if I call that page right here, if I call it directly slash API right here, the folder, it's just going to run this and it's going to know that I'm doing a get on it. Whoops, uh, this should be post. But there's also push and add and all that. Okay, so we're fetching the same thing but on our server here. Let's run that. You see that? It only fetched the two items that I output in JSON. And since the JSON data is just the same as, you know, it's, it's linking to the external site. So that's why it shows the two products. So this is the most basic but we don't want to keep our API open like that, right? Here is the API. If I just go to API like that, you see, it outputs the same thing. So I'm just fetching it from the products page and then I'm iterating through it the same way. That's how we create our own API, but we don't want to keep this open. With a lot of the sites, we like to pass through parameters. So let's say we do a question mark, action equals get, query equals products, right? Like that. So I'm gonna do this parameter. So I can pass through the parameter, and if there's no parameters, it's going to return a um, invalid response. So let's add through the parameters here. So the uh, get function here, it allows you to take in a request, okay? I'm just gonna do, um, you know, you can call anything you want. So I'm just gonna call it req for request. And I'm going to do a const url equals request dot next url dot search params and then on that I can do a const action equals URL dot get a because I want to get the um, a parameter I'm trying to mimic this right here that I'm trying to create I'm going to get the a parameter so the a parameter should have a value of get uh, when I pass it through and then I, I need a Q parameter too for a query so that's the action so let's do a const query equals URL dot get Q, right? Just like that. So now I can do if action equals get, then go in here and uh, only do that if it's, if I do a get on it. Then I can also do if Q query equals products, then I'll put this. There we go. So now it's only going to fetch it if I have these parameters. But what if I don't have the parameter? Well, now I can do a let response equals message invalid request. And now I don't need this let right here. I'm just setting it. So um, first I let that be invalid. If all the parameters go through, then it sets the request and I return that request. If no parameters go through, it's returning this response right here with invalid. And back here, since the data is taking in everything from here, it's returning, you know, a message or that. So uh, in here, I'll also put message and I'll make that empty. If it returns the response with a product, the message will be empty. If it returns nothing, then it will be invalid. So let's say that, and right here now I can take that data and I'm telling it if there is a message, then uh, return that. So I'll wrap this around a div so that it just, you can see it more clear. Okay, so now I'm calling this API here, right? With no parameters. So let's go back here, refresh. See, the message is invalid request. So if I go to the products page though, uh, the products page here, you see how it's still loading it? because there's caching done on Next.js. So uh, if you don't want it to cache, and while you're doing testing on your dev, you can also pass through a parameter in here called next, and you can give it revalidate. And set this to a low number like 10 or something. After 10 seconds, it revalidates it. So let's save that and refresh this. 
cannot read properties of reading map. Okay, so uh, you see it returned a message without any products in here. So if I actually made this products like that, then left it empty, then invalid request. But if I don't want to add this products in here like that, then I can also uh, have a question mark right here. And this is saying if there's data, then I'll put it. Otherwise, don't output anything. So let's see how that runs. And there we go. It still says invalid because it's not going to give us an error now. But you know, it is good to uh, leave both in here. So yeah, uh, it's good to be clear about things and just keep everything inside. And here it is. If I put in the parameter, you know, A equals uh, get and Q equals products, then it will fetch the products here. And you see it refreshed it. So right there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to write this without parameters to make it a little bit more clean. And this is the way you should actually do it. Let's say we want to just call products like that, right? API slash products. And uh, I'm going to go to my API folder right here. And I'm going to create a folder with a bracket slug and bracket. Now remember, this slug can be called anything. It can be called items, but I'll use the term slug because that's what's used in Next.js. And same thing inside of the slug folder, I'm going to create a file called route, same thing like that. So let's do an export async function. And this term right here, get, it has to be uppercase like that, exactly like that. And it takes in a request just like before, but now comma squirrely bracket params, just like that. So now we're taking in params. So now we can say const slug equals params dot slug. This params right here takes in whatever we're calling right here. So we have to call this slug. If I name this items, then I have to say items, okay? So it's the same thing, but since I'm calling it slug, we do that. Now we're saying if slug equals products, then do whatever we need to, right? So let's set this up the same way. Here is our response with an invalid request. And if the slug is products, we will return the same response with the products in there. And then right outside of here, same thing, return response.json response. So return that response again. And now we're gonna route it to our slug here inside of our page. So API products, and it should get the same thing. I'm going to save that, go back to our file here, refresh, and it does the same thing right there. So it's grabbing those two products. Here we go. I'm going to remove one product so that it shows you it's only taking in one product there. See, so it is working correctly. So uh, another way I'll show you right here is I also like to do this. If you want to be specific, you can create a folder called get. And then inside of that, you can create another folder called slug. And then inside of the slug folder, create the route. So, you know, uh, different ways of doing it. And then now the API, we can say get. And then if I want to do a post folder in here as well, we can create a post. And then that post can have a slug with a route inside. So you, you see how it, it can get, you can get like pretty unique with it. And then we can just call post like that or get. And then this part can be dynamic. We can just say iPhone or electronics. And we can pick up that slug parameter and just do whatever we need with it. One final thing, I will show you how to do a post in case you're wondering. So we're gonna go back to our original API right here if we call that through the API route. So remember we have the get and uh, let's make this post. So I'll show you how to do a post on that, right? And how we do that is through the uh, options here. We say method post and then we have a body. And inside the body you can have you know any kind of data that you want. Okay, and so we post that to the API route here, and then we'll pick it up as a post. And inside post, we can do the same thing, request. And now you can say const data equals await request.json. So this will get the body. Since we're doing await, we have to have this as an async. And uh, yeah, this will get the request the body that you called right here. Here is the body part, comma there. So body, and it'll take in that uh, request data that we're calling right here. And then you can do whatever you want with that data. So 
yeah that's how you do a post and uh, I will cover more on forms and posting on the next tutorial video because I'm trying to break this up so that it can just be more easy to learn and that's gonna do it for this tutorial I hope it helped you guys out if you want to download the full code from this video just join my patreon link in the description I'll see you guys next time code Kai out.